Hey guys, what is going on? Like me, one, two, three, and welcome to another episode of T Listing, where today in this video, I'll be ranking my favorite Lego Ninjago villains throughout the different seasons of Ninjago. So then, as I did say, I'll be ranking my favorite Lego Ninjago villain throughout the different seasons of Ninjago. Today's episode, instead of having A, B, C, I'll be having amazing, excellent, great, okay, and bad. So without further ado, let's get into it. So starting off, we have the Stone Warrior. I believe this is the giant version. I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I would possibly give this Stone Warrior villain maybe like a great because I like the idea of them how they like indestructible because the ninjas can't defeat them with like weapons except for like these really cool weapons from the Temple of Light. So I think that is really cool. Then we have Garmin, and I'm just gonna give him a main because I love the story of him where he started out as a kid like Wu but then got bit by the great devourer had like issues and then he just slowly became more evil so I really like that origin story and bringing him back in Sons of Garmadon or Sog as like pure evilness like the destruction Garmadon I really like that and then we have the Nindroid now I really like the idea of them so Possibly give them like a great as well and then we have a chronic or crocs I can't remember which one is which I like the time twins I think they're a great idea and dr. Saunas who he does play in disguise I think it's a really cool idea and I like him so I'd possibly give him maybe third position in great then we have the ghost now I can't tell which ghost this is I really wasn't a huge fan of Season 5, and I don't remember this ghost too much, so I'd possibly give it an okay, because I like how the ghost can actually possess people and, like, do a bunch of sort of ghostly stuff. Then we have one of these, these sort of serpent people from Season 7. Now, I really like the idea of them, how they're built out of serpents, and, then like, how they can talk to each other, so I think that is a really cool idea, and there was actually, like, three main leaders and they were the only ones who could talk I believe so I like the comedy duo because the one here and then further on there's another one and I really like them in season 7 how they brought this sort of a comedy feel so possibly give it maybe a great maybe in last position then we have this character now I'm not sure on what his name is because as I did say I wasn't a huge fan of season 5 and I believe he plays a much more bigger role in Day of the Departed, and I have not seen that, so I'd possibly give him an O, maybe first position in OK, because I kind of like his origin story in Season 5. Then we have Unagami, I'm not going to rank him because I've not seen any of Season 12, it's supposed to be airing tomorrow, which is Monday for me, so I'm really excited for that. So, if I want to do an update on this, I would definitely include him. Then we have a, another ghost. Now, I can't tell who this ghost is, but I'm just going to possibly have him or her. Hmm. I can't tell which one is. I believe it's like that sort of, d not dumb, but just, I'm just going to say like a dumb ghost who's quite funny in Season 5. So, possibly give him second position in okay. Then we have the sort of ice samurai now i really like these things how they're like ice and then like they're actually people but they're corrupted and like if you not kill them but if you like knock them out then they sort of turn back to normal so possibly maybe excellent so i really like that then we have the ice emperor if you haven't seen season 11 ice chapter then this will be a pretty big spoiler alert who is actually zane who's being corrupted by the Forbidden Spinjitzu scroll, and also who's like lost his mind, not mind, but like he's completely no idea who he is, and then General Vex like tricked him, so possibly give him like amazing, because I really liked him as a character, because he had no idea who he is, and he was just doing on what General Vex was telling him, and then like Lloyd being confused on who he is, trying to tell him who he is, so I really liked that. Then we have the main leader out of the season 7 sort of snake people so that was really cool so possibly give her like an excellent because 
Like, she was the main sort of snake villain in Season 7, so I really like her as a character. And she was also a female, so which is a really cool idea because you don't really get too many sort of main villains as female, so I thought that was great, so definitely give her an excellent. Then we have the other sort of comedy snake person, so possibly give him maybe second last position in great because I really liked him. Then we have the Overlord, and this is in his sort of golden armor from Season 3. I'm not sure if they're, like, making him exactly from Season 3, or it's just the character in general. So possibly give him an excellent, because whoever did voice act him did a great job in all of the seasons, because it's a very, very spine-tingling voice when you do hear it. I love hearing his voice, and just the character in general, because he's very evil, and I just love the character. Then we have Great, and this is, I don't know why I said now we have Great, but this is the other time twin. I really like this one because he's the younger one because he's been in this sort of a time vortex, so possibly give him like third position because I like his character because in season seven, like it's a pretty big future for him because he's been stuck in a time vortex, as I did say, and he comes back to Ninjago after like, I think, maybe like 20 years, maybe, but I'm not 100% sure, and like he's trying to deal with all the technology, so I really like that, and I thought it was a cool idea. And then we have the Omega Oni, now I really like this character, I really like his voice as well, and I like him as a character, because he has a really nice sort of origin story, how you don't know too much about him, because they're the bringers of doom, and just how scary that does sound for characters in the Ninjago world. So possibly have him in first position in Excellent. Then we have Asphira. Now I really like her origin story on how she did meet Wu and Garmadon. But I don't like how she wanted revenge. Because we've got a lot of characters in Ninjago who want revenge. So I wish they continued with the origin story for her like meeting Wu and Garmadon but then having a different sort of story instead of just getting revenge. But I do like her as a character, so possibly give her maybe first position if it's going to let me in great. Then we have the, I was about to say the Oni, but we have the Overlord in his dragon form. Now I really like him in his dragon form because seeing that was just spooky as just, it was just really spooky seeing him as a dragon. And I like how he did corrupt Garmadon in season one of, no, season two of Ninjago. That was just really spooky to see. And I like how Garmadon was trying to fight it when Lloyd was telling him, like, father. So that was a really emotional scene because, like, you could see Garmadon trying to fight back, but then the overall was more powerful. So I really like his dragon form. So possibly give him. Maybe amazing, because the final battle was great. Then we have Nata Khan. Now, I must say, I really like Nata Khan as a villain, because, like, he's a djinn, which means you can grant people wishes up to three, but you, grant, but you can't grant yourself wishes until you get married. So that is a really cool lore, but I wish we learned more about him as a character, like his origin story, how he was born. We, we know where he came from, which was Dinjago. Hopefully I say that correctly. But I wish we learned more about, like, what Dinjago is, because we really don't know Jinjago, I believe. Because we really don't know too much about his origin story, but I like how he does steal the realm crystal with, like, his sort of poofing sort of power. So I think that is a really cool idea, and also very effective. So possibly give him an excellent, because I love the sort of goal he's trying to do throughout Season 5. No. Season 6 of Ninjago, he wants to get married so he can have as many wishes as his as he can, so I think that is really cool. Then we have Maro, and I really like his origin story because it's very sad, because when he was a kid, he could control wind. At first, Wu thought he was the Green Ninja, so he trained him up, but then when it came to, like, the Golden Weapons choosing him, he didn't get picked, so then Maro, like got really angry, so he tried and tried again, like, getting stronger, more powerful, but then the Golden Weapons just rejected him, so then he tried to prove Wu and the Golden Weapons wrong, but then he sadly died and got taken to the 
realm of, no, cursed realm. So that is a really emotional story, and I like the sort of goal he's trying to do, trying to prove Wu still wrong from the day he did die. So that was really cool. So possibly give him maybe first position in grey. Then we have another of these sort of villains from season three. Now I really like these sort of ninjoids. I like how they're programmed to like do better than Zane because they're like more advanced technology than him. I also really like the fight scene with this one. So possibly move him into hmm, third position in great. Then we have Mr. E. I just love this character because no one knows who he is at first because Zane originally thought he was the quiet one because he can't talk and then still no one knows who he is because he never revealed who he actually is. A lot of people say it's actually Echo Zane which we do get introduced to in season 6. That is actually a great theory because it actually could be him because just there's a lot of reasons why it could be him but it could also be somebody else we're not a hundred percent sure i just love mr e as a character because he's quiet but he does it a but he seems to talk a lot just with like moving his hands his sword fighting so possibly give him just amazing maybe third position then we have master chen now i really like season four and like how he came up with this tournament of elements game but I wish we got more, a bit more of a backstory on how he did come up with this idea, why he came up with this idea, just a bit more of story to explain the Tournament of Elements itself. But I really like the character, I like how he's this fun sort of villain, so we'd possibly give him maybe second position in, if it's gonna, second position in excellent. Then we have Dog Shanks, now this is a really cool character because I like her because she originally was just a runner as like an athlete in Ninjago, but she wanted more. So then Nada Khan gave her wishes, but then she became Dog Shanks, so now she works for Nada Khan. So I really like that story because she wanted not power, but she wanted to be better than everybody else, but then she turned out like that. So I really like that origin story. It's sad, but I think it's a great idea. And then I also like how she's a girl as well because girl villains are always great and then I like the fight between Nia and Dog Shanks because she doesn't just act like a man like punching around and all that she actually does act like a female in a fight so I think that is a really great idea instead of just making her a female character but then a male sort of fighter that really doesn't work out so I'm glad they did make her both female and then a female fighter if that doesn't make sense so possibly give her like, hmm, first position, maybe no, maybe second position in great. Then we have Flint Lockwood, I, wait, Flint Lockwood, I believe his name is. Now I really like this character because he is a pirate and I like how he can like shoot very accurate. And then I like how throughout the season of season six, he slowly begins to like not trust Naruto Khan as he gets sort of more ambitious and more sort of towards his goal but then at the end of season six no, not Naruto Khan but Flint does actually portray him and join the ninja so I really like that at first he trusted him like almost like a brother but then throughout the season he slowly becomes more distant from Naruto Khan and I also like his origin story so possibly give him Maybe third position. And then we have... Honestly, I've forgotten this guy's name. Shoot. But I love this character. I like how he does do dark magic. I really like that idea. And how he's trying to, like, sabotage. Sometimes in Season 4, the challenges the ninjas do for Tournament of the Elements. So I really like that. And then I like how he is connected with Master Chen and Garmadon. Because Master Chen was actually the sort of master for Garmadon and this character. So I really like that and like how they're each connected with each other. But then he is sent to the Cursed Realm, I believe. So I really like that and I like how we do see him in Season 6 of Ninjago. And then I also believe he's in 
season five just for like a quick appearance. So possibly give him maybe second position in great. Then we have, I've actually forgotten this guy's name once again, so very sorry about that. But I really like this character because he doesn't talk at all, but his face expression does explain it. Because he can switch between two, I believe it's like angry and then sad. But it might be just whatever he is feeling, so if he feels sad he could flick to that. So I really like this character because he can do pretty much anything any other Nada Khan sort of henchman can do. And I also really like how he does fight, so possibly give him maybe fourth position in, no, fifth position in great. Then we have Harumi. I'm just going to give her straight up amazing. No, maybe second position in amazing because I love how at first in season A of Ninjago, Sons of Garmadon, we learned that she's the princess and she lost her family. And then as the season goes, we begin to learn that she actually likes Lloyd, which I think is a great idea. But then as the season does go on, we learn that she is the quiet one and she had this whole plot to bring back Garmadon because the ninjas like killed her family and she lost her family. So I really like this character and her goals and ambitions are really, really great. And then I also like how throughout season Nine of Ninjago Hunted, she continues to trust Garmadon as like a father. So I really like her as a character, and whoever did voice her is great. Then we have the preeminent, and then this is like the mother of like the cursed realm or the cursed world. Now this character was okay. I really wouldn't call her a villain because she's not in it for too long and she really doesn't act like that sort of villain because she dies very easily just from like a massive wave of water so I kind of wish there was maybe a bit more of a better boss battle with Nia and the preeminent because it was just like this massive wave so possibly give her a maybe maybe like down here a little further maybe Therefore, great because I like how she is like a realm itself. That is a really cool concept to think about, and she can just keep producing ghost and ghost after ghost, even if they die. So they're not gonna go anywhere except her. So you have like an entire army. Then we have the great devourer. Now I really like this character because in season one of Ninjago we do learn about this character, this massive snake, and it did bit. Bite Garmadon as a young kid, and it slowly corrupted him to become evil. And then the only way to bring the Great Devourer back is to have like these really nice sort of blades, and you've got to place them in the right position. So a lot of origin story for the Great Devourer. But I wish we learned on how they did trap and capture the Great Devourer, because it was a small snake snake when it bit Garmadon. But then how did they find the snake? How did they trap it? What did they have to do? So I wish we did learn about that a little more. But I love how it just does destroy Ninjago. Just like, just smashing through buildings. Just sliding through. And then I like how Garmadon did face it at the end. Because he took pretty much everything away from him. Like his looks, his like personality. Pers cannot say that word. But I really like how Garmadon did take it on with the four gold weapons because he was the only one who could do it. So possibly give the Great Devourer maybe last position in a last position in amazing. Then we have another ghost. Now this is the Archer. Now I really like the sort of arrows he does or her has because I believe they're like some sort of arrows where if you shoot them. Something really bad does happen to the character who does get shot, or the ninja. So I really like that because it's some sort of like cursed arrow. So that is a really cool idea. So maybe like second position in okay. Then we have general like I've honestly forgotten this guy's name, but he's a stone warrior, and I really like this character in Ninjago because he's like the general of the stone warriors. But then Galmadon becomes like the sort of a bigger boss for these stone warriors so possibly give this character a maybe like hmm maybe second position in excellent then we have ultraviolet now i really like this character because 
she's a crazy, I wouldn't say like crazy crazy, but she's just crazy and I love how she talks, how she acts. So it's a really great character to actually see in the different episodes of Ninjago. So possibly just give her straight up, maybe like excellent, but hmm, possibly, maybe, maybe like that, I think that's a good position. Then we have Scales, I believe. Now, I really like this character because I like how, at first, he wasn't the, ge like, sort of the general of that tribe of snakes, but then he does challenge the general, and he does win, so I really like that. And then, we do see him in, I believe, Season 7 again, and then also Season 11, I believe, but I'm not 100% sure, so I really like this character, so possibly give him maybe, like, First position in great. Then we have Samurai. Now we only got introduced to him in the pilot season, and he was like the sort of general of the skeleton army apart from Garmadon. But I just wish we got more of him in the different seasons of Ninjago because I really liked him as a character. But then he did die. Well, not die, he just like disappeared from holding the golden weapons because you can't actually control them all at once because. He got this sort of sense of power that he could do it, but then he couldn't. Because I'm quite curious to see on what did happen to him. Did he, like, just completely, like, vanish out of existence? Or, like, did he get sent somewhere worse than the Underworld? So, very curious about that. But I do like him as a character. Like, he's sort of ambitious towards, like, trying to fight the ninja. Like, taking on Kai. So, possibly have him, hmm, maybe like, down, no, I might move him like, up to there, and then we have, Chums, oh, I forgot his name, Pythor P. Chumsworth, I really like this character, because at first, when you do meet him, you don't, well, at first, I didn't actually trust him, because he's a snake, now, I'm not just saying that, because the episode is called that, or one of the episodes in the, Season 1, I'm saying that because it's a snake, and you really don't trust those sort of, not people, but characters. But I like how Lloyd did just trust him straight away. They became friends, they like took, not took down, but like they raided this small sort of town. But then Pythor did portray him, and then I like how Lloyd like tried to take him on as well. So I really like that, and I like the character development with him. So possibly maybe give him like third position in excellent, then we have the, I'm not going to say big guy, but this really cool guy here, I've actually forgotten his name, I forget so many Ninjago names, so sorry about that, I really like this character because I like him as like some sort of like bike rider, also with Mr. E, those two are bike riders, so I really like him as a character, and then like how he does fight is really cool, and then how he's a part and how he is like sort of the gang with Harumi, Mr. E, Bite, Ultraviolet, Garmadon. So I really like that. So possibly give him hmm, maybe like second position in. Uh, I'm really not sure. Maybe like second position in Excellent. Then we have Iron Baron. Now I thought this was a great character in season 8 of Nin. No, season 9 of Ninjago, is it? Season 9 of Ninjago, I thought this was a great character because he was a really cool sort of a character because you don't really know too much about him but because you only get introduced to him at the end of Season 8 of Ninjago. Shoot, I'm totally off what season we're on. So, at the end of Sons of Garmadon, we do get introduced to him, but very quickly. But then at the start of Hunted, we do get introduced to him. I really like him as a character because he does look pretty worn down and like beaten up from like the scars he's gotten. Like he only has one leg, his arm. But I wish we learned more about how he did get that. Like was he in a fight with an Oni or something? So I wish we did learn about him. But I love the idea of him telling lies to his sort of tribe members and then believing them. So lies are a very big part of who he is, which I think is a great idea, but then not to other kids because lies aren't good to tell.
but I like him telling lies to actually trick people into trusting him, believing him, but then that does backfire. So possibly, maybe give him second position in excellent. So if you guys did enjoy this, just I decided making this video and also sharing my thoughts and opinions on my favourite Lego Ninjago villains. I would love to hear on what you have to say for your favourite Ninjago villain or like sort of side villain. So this episode will probably be a lot more longer than the usual ones because we had a lot more to go through because there is a lot of Ninjago villains and then also side villains. So, if you did stick to the end, then thank you so much. It really does mean a lot. So, as always, guys, hope you guys did enjoy this video and expect the next episode next week. And I can see you soon. Goodbye.